Hey guys, I'm Samantha and I'm here to do my March reading wrap up. Uh, for the month of March, I read a total of 13 books, four of which were ebooks, two were of my own personal library, seven were from borrowed from the local library, and one of those ebooks was from um, the Libby app that I borrowed. And I had four, for four stars, I had eight books. Five, two, and okay. And the books that I've read for March is Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. This I read as a Libya Libby audio audiobook Libby ebook, and I gave it four stars. I enjoyed the storyline and plot pretty well. My only main gripe with the books is how many different points of view. It jumps between there are so many characters to keep up with which I don't usually don't mind but that is usually whenever it's only a, a I guess third person narrator uh, narrative in it so it's not jumping between characters points of views um, other than that it's really the main gripe I had of it and it took me a couple months to finish because it is a chunky book, even with ebook version, I think it was a uh, at least 800 and something pages. So it did take me quite a while to actually finish this, because I think I started this at the beginning of the year. But um, book two is "Smoke Gets in Your Eyes" by Caitlin Doherty. She is the um, woman behind the Ask a Mortician YouTube channel, and I really enjoy watching her content. So I was happy that my library had a copy that I could actually read. I gave this book five stars, which I think it might have been one, like, one of the first five star books of the year, if I'm remembering co correctly. I just loved the way her narrative is, and considering I watched so many of her videos already, I could read it in like her tone, tone of voice, if that makes any sense. So I really I highly recommend that. I read The Enneagram in You, Understand Your Personality Type and How It Transformed Your Relationships by uh, Gina Gomez. This was also a library book that I picked up. I gave it four stars. I, With my reading with this book, and if I'm understanding correctly, I, I'm a type six, which... I kind of, when I took the quiz at the beginning of the book, it came out where I could have been like four different types, so I'm not entirely too sure how accurate it is, but I took an online quiz and it, it narrowed it down to an, like type six. It was written pretty well. I wouldn't mind having my own copy where I could annotate and like, uh, like put sticky notes where the information was relevant to me was. Um, I, if I come across it in a bookstore, I'll probably pick up my own copy just to have for reference. And I finally finished The Telltale Heart and Other Writings by Edgar Allan Poe. This is my own copy that I've had for a while. I gave this three stars. I didn't fully read the whole, whole thing. This uh, edition has his only full-length novel in it. And I got maybe a couple of chapters of the way in the a full length novel before I decided just to skip over it and go to the the poems and sonnets in here because his writing is a little too dry for me and I understand it was the the way that books were written back then. But there was way too many words that described every little thing like over and over again. I got pretty tired of it. I wouldn't mind having a like updated edited version where it kind of has I guess in a way been translated for today's um speech. I understand that back then they were per paid by word. So it's understandable that it was this long, but for nowadays it was just pretty tough to get through. But overall, with the stories that I had read back in high school, I remembered and really enjoyed those, so it was nice to get back to um, reviewing those. 
I also read Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman. This was another library book that I rated four stars. This is my first Neil Gaiman book, too, that I've ever read, and I really enjoyed his storytelling of the Norse mythology. He made it really easy to understand and relatable and pretty humorous at some times with a lot of the gods and their antics that they get up with, so I really did enjoy reading that. I read From Here to Eternity, Traveling the World to Find the Good Death, Another book by Caitlin Doherty is, is another one that I got from the library. I rated this one four stars. I, I didn't enjoy this as much as from um, her first novel, or her first memoir, I should say. But with her going around the world to the different cultures, it was really interesting to see how everyone in different cultures handled death in their own way. So I, I do recommend that if you're interested in what other cultures, how they handle death. I read Black Cats and Broken Mirrors, edited by John Helpers. This is a short story collection that um, is by multiple different authors. They created stories based on different superstitions that span multiple different cultures and I rated this a, a three stars. This was a reread for me. I read this back I think Goodreads was telling me that I read it back in 2015. It honestly may have been even earlier than that. I had this book for a while or my sister had this book for a while and she gave it to me. Um, some of the stories I really did enjoy. Some of them I didn't really care for her, hence the reason why I just got a three stars. But I do recommend this for if you're wanting um, a short story collection. A lot of the different takes of the different superstitions uh, were done really well. I read The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson as a library copy. I rated this four stars. I really enjoyed the writing style that Eric Larson had used for this book. Um, it had two timelines, well, it's on the same timelines, but two different point of views of the architect who was behind the Chicago's World Fair and the murder, murderer H.H. H. Holmes who had created a hotel for the World's Fair and killed at least 200 plus people during that time span when the World's Fair was in Chicago. And the way that he written the the book made it seem more of a fictionalized version of it just made it more easier to read for me because I find I I find nonfiction most of the time a little dry and kind of hard to keep focused. But the way that his tone was with this telling the story of what was happening during that time made it easy to get through. I read Wild West Volume 1, Calamity Jane by Theron Glorious. This was a e-arc e that I got from NetGalley. And this actually came out, uh, I think, May of last year, but it was still available on NetGalley for review. I rated it four stars. I really enjoyed the art style of this graphic novel. It's of course a, like a western style but it tells you the story of how Calamity Jane uh, got to be and I really enjoyed it and I would definitely uh, pick up volume 2 once it's available. I read Legends edited by Robert Silverberg. This was another library book um, short story collection that I picked up. Um, the short stories were by multiple different authors, one of them being Stephen King, and it is some fantasy short stories that are kind of um, like little novellas, pretty much, of their previous books. So it takes characters from earlier books that they've written and takes them into like a side storyline. Um, considering that I didn't read any of the books that was related to these stories, I wasn't lost at all. I just didn't have any context of who the characters was, but it wasn't too distracting and I enjoyed it pretty well. 
and I gave that one four stars. I have two other NetGalley ebooks that I had uh, reviewed. These come out later this year. The first one being Knit Hats with Wool Wooly Wormhead Styles for the Entire Family by Wooly Wormhead. She is a pattern designer that I r am really uh, like know of. I've made quite a few of her hat patterns in the past, so when I saw this as um, available on NetGalley, I definitely requested it immediately because her hat patterns are super fun to make. They seem like they are super complicated, but the way the patterns are written are super intuitive. It, the photography in the book itself is makes it look really clear. That way you can use it as a reference to where you are in your pattern. And it, obviously I gave this um, e-copy a five-star review. And the, the other net galley book I got is uh, Creative Crochet Projects, 12 Playful Projects for Beginners and Beyond by Stephanie Pork Porkney. This I gave four stars. Um, the photography in this one as well was really well done, really clear. The instructions for how to do like the beginner crochet stitches were great. The patterns in it are really cute and fun. It's just for me, it hits kind of a different age range for those items. There is um, a few. The patterns in the book are really cute and fun, but they are more leaning towards things for uh, small children, like toys. There's a couple of foldable like food toy patterns to make, which is fun to, to make and kids will love it, but it's not something that I normally would gravitate towards and considering I don't have children of my own but I do have god children that they may be interested in it may be once in a blue moon that I'll make something like that but I did give it four stars it is really well composed for a pattern book and I definitely highly recommend checking it out and the last book I finished I just finished uh, a couple of nights ago is Sing You Home by Jodi Pico I gave this book a three stars. I read it as a library copy. At the beginning of the book, I was really enjoying it. This is a contemporary novel that follows um, a married couple on their journey with um, struggling with infertility, going through multiple IVF rounds, and dealing with multiple miscarriages and a stillbirth of their son and they eventually end up getting a divorce and leading to a court trial um, that is ongoing throughout the rest of the book. The first half of the book I was really connecting with it because I myself struggle with infertility and the main character su suffers from the same um, the same symptoms that I have. She also has PCOS so that is what really connected to me since I have it. So I really got hooked and related to the main character, but then once it got to the second half with the whole courtroom scene and it throwing a bunch of religion into the mix, which I understand for some people it is really interesting and I'm not knocking that whatsoever, but for me personally it got a little too much. And the logic in some parts of the whole courtroom scene kind of went out the window a little bit. So the last half of it kind of made me roll my eyes until the very end. And the ending of it did not end well at all. It just didn't make sense. There was no lead up to the how the ending was. Um, but yeah, I, like I said, I gave this th book three stars. If you're interested in any of jo Jody Pico's book, I, it has a good message behind it, but the way that it was executed in the end, I didn't really think that it was very good. But don't let my opinion stop you from reading any books. But anyways, I'm going to head out and um, get this edited. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye.